Lee in Delaware writes to me, with the introduction of the Ampex ADD-1 in the early 1970s, <clears throat> the pure analog signal was used for groove spacing while the cutting head was fed a digitally delayed signal of only 12 bits at the time. So unless one of the now rare playback units with a preview head was used, vinyl can't be pure analog. Mm-hmm. Very inter very interesting. <laughs> Okay, so Lee, here's, you, you've hit upon something that's kind of interesting that I'll explain. And I, I <laughs> see this stack of equipment. <laughs> These are all DACs that people have traded in for our new Mark II DAC. And I, sometimes you don't get, when you come on a tour, you see all this stuff. But I mean, look at this pile. And this is third or fourth stack and then we move these on and we'll sell them to people at a reduced price because it's an older model <laughs> but a lot of dax all right so let me explain what what lee's talking about when you cut a record the groove spacing has to change depending on the frequency that is going to be cut into that groove so for example when you put a low frequency on, you need a wide groove spacing. And when you put a high frequency on, you want a smaller groove spacing. This is what enables the long play or the LP record. That's how it happens. If you had only one spacing, let's say that you, you took the large spacing for low frequencies and you did highs and lows on that, well, it would be just fine except that <laughs> You, you wouldn't get much onto that record. And that's how an LP became, the long play record came because it had variable groove spacing. How does the cutting head know when it's going to need to get wide or small? You put in a signal first, you, you, whatever you're going to cut into the groove goes in first and then a few milliseconds later, the actual signal where that's moving the stylus back and forth comes into play. So what they have done is they have taken the original analog tape, if that's how they did it, and they used that to control the groove spacing, and then they digitally copied that analog tape, delayed it by a few milliseconds, and what you're actually hearing was the digital copy of the analog master. Now, I haven't done a lot of research. I know that that did happen. How many times that happened? I don't know. Like when we do a LP at Octave Records, we take the easy way and what I think to be the better way is we start <laughs> with a DSD high resolution recording and we have built a really cool little digital delay box that takes one signal, one DSD signal, delays it the appropriate amount, and then it goes through a high precision, custom built digital to analog converter at the output of this box. So that the exact same signal goes to the cutting head and to the cutter. And that's how we did it. But, and that's because DSD is so much cleaner and better than trying to do it any other way. But that's a whole different story. But yeah, that's an interesting piece because that means most of, well, all of the ones that were done on that original Ampex device, they weren't really analog. They were digital. Okay, thanks.